Uh, my name is Cesar Gaviria. I am a visual merchandising director. Um, most recently, I was working for DVF, as Raul said, uh, but I also work for brands such as Gantt, Sea Wonder, um, Scotch and Soda, the infamous Ed Hardy at one point. Um, so I do have a, a long few years of experience in visual merchandising. Um, I think we should just, should I just, just dive in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can dive so, in. I mean, uh, do you, I would love to, if you can tell the audience, um, how did you get into this? Uh, it was something that you always wanted. It was kind of like, you know, it was, accident. so it was more of a uh, life happened. Um, my, I moved from Colombia to the United States to go to school. Um, the plan was always to do high school and university here. I did high school and throughout high school, I took uh, technical design classes, which is what I focus on because my, what I wanted to major on in college was going to be uh, architecture. Uh, once I graduated high school, I moved to New York City. Um, I wanted to take a year off and just sort of like party and relax before going to college. Uh, one year off, turning to two, then into three, I started working for Ed Hardy at a very young age at a time that they were doing very, very well. So um, it was hard for me to say no to the money I was making and the lifestyle that I was carrying at the moment. Um, and with Ed Hardy's where I really, actually I started touching base when I was in high school, I worked for Saks and that's where I really understood what like visual merchandising was because I was part of the support team for visual merchandising. And then with Ed Hardy, I did start going diving very deeply into visual merchandising, opening stores, uh, creating guidelines, windows, um, even with the trade shows in Vegas that I was a part of. Uh, from Gantt, I did styling for a little bit. Um, I worked with Missoni, Brioni, uh, Montclair and a few other brands. I did my first fashion show that I was the lead stylist when I was 25, Junior Fashion Week. And after that, I decided to go back into visual merchandising. And that's when I joined Sea Wonder. Um, in between, I did Scotch and Soda. I did some freelance work for Religion, which is a brand in the UK. Um, ultimately, I ended up at Gantt, and most recently, I was with DVF. Great. Um, with DVF, I think it's it was it's been a great experience. Um, at this at DVF, I was in charge of the VM team, uh, creating window concepts, uh, in store merchandising revamping all of the brand guidelines for visual merchandising because they the, the company had not had anybody in place for a long time. Um, so we ended up creating new visual merchandising guidelines for the company, which were very, very helpful. Um, we would work on market setup for each market. Uh, we would work with the retail team to work on customer experience. And we also had a lot of special projects just because Diane herself um, just has a lot of side projects and parties and events and dinners and everything that she did, uh, the VM team had to be a part of, um, most, mostly myself, and then I would just bring my team in. Um, but yeah, we were part of mostly everything at DBF. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Caesar today, uh, he wanted to talk about the impact of visual merchandising in order to attract uh, food traffic and sales to the store. So we can go ahead, Caesar, you can share your screen and we can like, we can wait to see the amazing projects that you're going to show us. Yeah, so the one thing that I wanted to mention, you know, I, as I mentioned earlier, is that we um, at DVF, they didn't have direction for a while. So... I, when I, we were talking about what I wanted to speak about during the session, it came to mind the impact that we made once we actually had a VM team in place. And it was a big, big impact. Um, 
starting with uh, we did a New York Fashion Week party um, that was very, very successful. We were leading, I was leading the entire team at the time. I didn't have anybody with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I was leading the entire thing and I had a company work with me during the installation and it was very, very helpful. Um, and I had one intern, but during the conversation with the, uh, Deanne about this event, uh, what she wanted to do is to make sure that um, they, the party was going to be hosted at the store in Meatpacking. And she wanted to make sure that the store didn't feel like a store, but it felt like, a, like an event space. And also that it was Instagram ready in every corner of the store. And that's what we did. Um, interestingly enough, um, this is, this is the stairs in the location. Um, but Amazing. interestingly enough, I'm just going to give you a back story a little bit about this project. Um, Diane herself, the day of the actual event, um, somebody sent her pictures while we were doing the setup of the event. And obviously it's mayhem everywhere. Everything looked crazy and she freaked out. She wanted to like completely rip everything off. She didn't want to continue with the direction that we had done, even though we had discussed this plenty of times. Um, between the marketing and PR team and myself, we stood our ground and were like, we can't back up. Um, we need to move forward. And I, she asked me, do you believe in this? And I said, yes. And, and so we moved forward with the design. Um, it was very great. This is the first time that the stairs in the building were covered in vinyl. Um, they used to just put quotes. So like the fear is not an option or in charge or love is life, which is quotes that she says all the time. I decided to cover the stairs in vinyl, uh, which is something that the company now does uh, ongoing. They update the different prints. Uh, just because it became a huge impact for the brand and it became more of a backdrop for customers to come in and shop. Um, this actually increased our food traffic after we, we installed this. So those are the stairs. Um, this is another area in the store. We had um, 3D printed um, letters. Um, just to make sure that is what we had one of the quotes at the time she was very into fear is not an option. Uh, so that's what we uh, focus on. Uh, we also had the zodiac room. We had a huge room in the space that was never used. So we decided to create a zodiac room. She was very into the zodiac. Um, and we launched this the same day as the New York fashion week party. Um, we had a photo booth moment that was very big and, and impactful. Um, people were taking tons of pictures on this, a huge lines trying to like get in this photo booth. Um, the entire space was fully uh, covered in print and vinyl. We installed uh, blue lighting around the space just so that it went with, with the uh, prints that we had. And I'd like to point out that all the prints that were used for this installation were actually prints from the spring collection that was coming out the following day. Uh, so people were really, really excited. Uh, they really um, started asking for all the styles that we had because we had some mannequins around wearing the, the clothes. Um, I have a photo of here of Diane herself coming down the stairs um during the event this image was um in every single media outlet um i mean we had vogue people wwd and this was the image that was in every single media outlet um every news every news um story that came out she was there and um, instead of using the step and repeat, which we had, um, the stairs with the vinyl became the backdrop. Um, and that's where we had everybody. So that's Derek Glasper, Diane, Carly, everybody decided to do their photos on their stairs just beca because they were so impactful. Um, during this actual installation or right after this installation, um, 
I believe we had a 30% increase in foot traffic compared to the year prior, which was 2018, um, which is, is incredible. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that you don't really hear of, but what we found out is that people were really drawn to the stairs. So they would walk by the space, by the store, and they would see the stairs and they would come in, even if they didn't know who, Di who Diane was or DVF was. Um, so that helped us increase our traffic. Um, but yeah, this was one of the most successful uh, events that we had. Um, again, we had a 30% increase in traffic with a 15% increase in sales compared to the year prior, which is pretty high. Um, you don't really see double digit increases um, on traffic or sales just because of an installation. Um, so that was one of the really fun projects. That was actually my first project at DVF. As I mentioned earlier, she was not having it and she asked me if I was believing in my project I did. And the following day, uh, really early, because I had to be back at the, the office really early, I woke up early and the first thing I had in my inbox was an email from DVF herself just thanking me for really sticking to my, to my project and for believing in what I wanted to do. And, and she said that I hit it out of the park I, just because everywhere was an actual Instagram moment and that's what she asked for. So she, she got it. Um, the next project that I wanted to talk about was um, something that a lot of brands are doing and is doing like a gallery or collaboration with artists. Um, again, that gallery space, that gallery space that we had that was uh, the Zodiac Room. Uh, we ended up partnering with Ashley Longshore. She is a big, big uh, pop culture artist, I would say. Um, we found her via Instagram and Diane um, decided that she wanted to partner with her and she wanted um, paintings of the women that she believed in or that had an influence in her life. Uh, so we ended up with this DVF and Ashley Longshore Gallery. Um, mm -hmm. This space was, um, we turned this space over, I think in two weeks. It was a very quick and fast turnover. Um, Ashley, I don't know how she did it, but she painted 34 paintings in eight days. Um, I thought that was crazy and incredible, but she made it happen. Um, and this particular room we launched with International Women's Day. Um, it was a really, really big hit. Uh, we were expecting to have this up for um, three months. It ended up lasting a year. We made two updates to the room um, just because it was, it was so successful. Um, again, we were tracking um, sales and food traffic. This room in particular brought in a lot, a lot of people. Um, I believe we had about a 40% increase in food traffic, which is 10% more than we did for the, for the stairs. Um, and then for sales, we actually had a 15% increase and then a five to 10% um, fluctuation between the second month and over just because people already knew about the the room, so like a lot of people have visited, but a lot of people that were coming in, uh, just visiting New York City would come to see the room. We had a lot of tourists coming from the High Line walking by and they would see it and they would come in. So that was pretty good for, for the business for us. Um, and this is one of the things that I think a lot of brands need to tap into, making sure that the spaces that they have available to themselves it's something that can become interactive to the customer and be more of an experience than just, um, you know, a, a space with clothes and, and sales associates. I think we're in an era where shopping online is very convenient and very easy. And in order for you to like really keep people in your stores, you just need to make sure that you are doing the extra 
mile and we really hit it with this one. Um, this is one of the updates we made. We actually added um, ottomans that were uh, with one of our prints and then we added the longshore, the Ashley longshore signature on the floor just to make it a little, feel a little more like her actual studio. Um, this was again, this was the second update we did and we did it a year later um, during International Women's Day. So here's another shot. I 100% agree with what you're saying, Cesar. I feel like it's almost like if you think about it in New York City, it's, it's, it's way too expensive to have a place like this big and only use it to, to sell something. You know, it's like... Yeah, yeah. And that's the one thing that... Uh, that was the number one thing that I was given as a project when I joined. We wanted to make sure that we were creating spaces that were a little more interactive. So like the stairs... Uh, the vinyl stairs that we created, we ended up developing like um, photo booth moment or Instagram moments in every single location, um, just to make sure that people still had that connection to our headquarters, which, you know, is the one place that we put the most focus on. Um, but even for this, this photo is actually from this year, International Women's Day, that we ended up partnering with. Um, MasterCard and they developed um, an AI uh, program that we would use with, with iPads and you can see them on the ottomans. You would pick up the iPad and point it to each one of the paintings and it would actually tell you about the painting, why it was picked. Um, for Beyonce, for example, it would show one of her music videos. So like it became very interactive and fun for people and we actually kept this up after the event during International Women's Day, and it was very, very successful. And in addition to this, we added QR codes around the store so that like when people were actually shopping around, they would find one of the QR codes, scan it, and they, it would land on like how to tie a wrap dress, or you know, what were the hero prints for, in, for DVF, um, which made it a little more interactive and, and a little more fun for the customer to explore rather than just looking at the clothes. Um, if I'm not wrong, actually, you guys nominated this for, um, it was nominated for- Best exhibition, yeah. Yes. Installation exhibition, yeah, of course. Yeah, and it had a lot of, uh, yeah, 100%. It's, we thought it was, good. It's, it was very genius to do that. And, uh, and uh, especially the way, you know, the way that it was presented and, it's interesting, like, I would think, if I think of luxury stores or luxury boutiques, whatever, 10 years ago, it's, a, it's as if they were so protective over their property, you know? You will go there and you will almost be scared to touch anything or to, like, God forbid you take a picture or anything, you know? Yeah. Now it's, it's, it's the opposite. It's like they put a couch there so you can sit and hang out and yeah. they give you champagne and then have this corner where you can take your picture. It's, it's amazing yeah. the change. It's, it's all about the experience. And that was something that we're trying to do, uh, to bring an experience, something that was different for the customer so that they would actually spend more time discovering your products. Because at the end of the day, you know, you can go into any shop and if all you see are racks with clothes, you can, you know, you want to stand out from, you know, the pile and yeah. you have things like this or you have the QR codes that tell you how to wrap a wrap dress or like something that becomes a little more interactive is very helpful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was one of the most fun projects to work on. Uh, Ashley Longshore herself is really, really, really cool, super crazy and uh, again very very talented so this was a very successful partnership for us and i ask you a question right there do you have like uh you had kind of she was she participating in kind of like the design and execution of this thing the artist or she so? she sent us um photos of her studio okay and so we picked um uh, like this picture is a little too white uh, but like we picked the color of the wall, then we picked the color of the floor. Originally, the floor was like a bubblegum pink. Yeah. That would sort of match the Ashley Longshirt signature in the back. The window right in front of it was her signature, and I fear is not an option. Mm -hmm. um, she provided us with the 
paintings, which she actually selected which people she was going to paint with uh, Dion herself, and they decided what she wanted and whatnot. Um, but the layout and, and, and all of the other stuff was done by our team. I see. Yeah. That was a very, very fun project. Um, the next project I wanted to talk about, and this is just because we're talking about increasing food traffic and increasing sales. Um, I wanted to bring up an example um, of something that we did that was very successful in one location, which is meatpacking, but it was not very successful in any of the other locations. Um, and I think that's something that as VM, we need to make sure that we're focusing on the demographics of different areas rather than just making sure that we do the same thing in every single location. Um, for summer of last year, we actually um, changed our entire concept um, because Diane was uh, named the grandmother of the Statue of Liberty and she was part of creating a documentary with HBO. Um, we created an entire, um, an AI experience of the Statue of Liberty with Apple that was actually also nominated um, by you guys. And we had all of these things, the documentary, the app, we had a book and she was nominated Then the uh, Statue of Liberty Museum was opening. So we had a lot of things that um, it seemed like it was better for us to change our original concept to more of like a Statue of Liberty concept. And we did that. In New York City, it was very well received. People loved it. Um, we had good traffic, you know, keeping up with the trend of what we have been doing for the beginning. Um, you know, we put her dress from the Met Gala up in the window as well. Um, so we did push this a little bit. We had like crowns created by Argon Props to resemble the Statue of Liberty. The plants that we had were actually the, the base on a photograph of the Statue of Liberty. So all of that green color is based on what the Statue of Liberty looks like. Um, it was great for New York City, not so great for the rest of the stores. So I think we always need to keep in mind um, that whatever concepts that we create need to work for all the different um, locations that, that you're in charge of, um, just be all the different markets, because it doesn't really resonate everywhere. And I think we missed Mark on this one. Um, I, unfortunately, Diane is very, um, setting her ways and when she wants something she wants something and it was this was something that she really wanted we ended up doing it and again it was very successful in new york city people loved it um, the documentary was great everybody talked about it the app is amazing and it actually really is amazing um, but it just didn't hit the note with the rest of the locations and the food traffic wasn't as good as it should have been and sales were good, but they weren't great. Um, so I wanted to just talk about this one project just to bring up that as a VM director, we always have to keep that in mind. We need to keep in mind all the different markets that we work with. Um, the next project that I do want to touch on um, is our, we had um, last fall, we, during market, uh, full market, I saw the collection and I fell in love with one of the prints, which was a newspaper print. And we had all of these um, styles that were done in newspaper. And immediately I thought we needed to focus on that and just, I really try to hit it out of the park with this one. And uh, once fall came around, we did have a concept that focused on breaking news is what um, we decided to call it for Windows. Uh, but the overall um, direction for that season was in charge since 1972. 
but it came from us pushing this window. Um, the creative department ended up partnering, we ended up partnering with the creative department, uh, digital creative, and we created amazing videos uh, that just show Diane in the 70s running from one corner to the other, you know, looking amazing. Uh, the dresses were great. We focused a lot on, on her quotes and we actually updated it every two weeks with a like new clothes and, and a new quote just to make sure that it stayed relevant. And the video we continue to update as well throughout the entire season. This particular, um, this particular concept was very, very well received. Um, it was also nominated by you guys for uh, Heritage Window. The image that you guys have for this is the one in London, which was, we did a great job in that location. I don't think I have that image here. Um, but one of the things that I decided to move forward with, I really like the idea of sort of like New York and you know the videos that we created were focused on Diane in New York City and like really building her brand. So we decided to have like crystallized pigeons. Um, we created these newspaper vending machines that reminded you of New York City. Um, and it was really, really fun. The collection sold really, really great. Um, we actually, for the newspaper, which you can see here a little bit, um, completely sold out of some of the styles, even before it got to the store, because we, we did pre-sale um, on the website. And once the, st the stores started getting this collection, it, was just, it just, just flew out the door. We had to reorder um, some of the styles from the factory just because it was selling so well. Um, so this, this particular collection, um, we did a really good job at a, a 360 experience. So like our videos on Instagram were very tied to this. Um, everything just looked great. Um, definitely was one of my favorite windows to work with. And my favorite thing, let me see if I can, is this pigeons. I had these custom made pigeons covering crystals from Argon Props. You can see one at the bottom next to the vending machine as well. And those were really, really fun to work with. Um, Amazing, in New York City. It was either a pigeon or a rat. What's up? <laughs> it was either a pigeon or a rat, you know? And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and I didn't like the rat. Like we tried to make yeah. rat for, for uh, Chinese New Year and we couldn't figure it out. And I was like, ah, oh, pigeons are gonna be really cool and fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a fun, fun project. I actually have two of the pigeons in my house. <laughs> um, so that was that for fall. Um, another project that I think we should talk about is uh TVF. Um, a lot of brands are doing pop-ups with special pro with special product and just making sure that it's, it's very quick, very hot, it's a drop, and we actually did that with TVF. TVF is Talita Van Forstenberg, which is uh, Diane's uh, uh, granddaughter. So we did a pop-up in LA, um, and for this pop-up, um, the collection was designed with Talita, she is very big on flowers, sort of like the bohemian style uh, type of life, um, very LA. And for the launch of this collection, we decided to go to LA, uh, do a small pop-up three days, and we actually sold out of the product. We sold over $100,000 in three days. And these were items that the price points were not super high. Um, but it was all about the presentation, how we presented it on our uh, social media and like the store, everybody that came through the store uh, was taking photos. All of these flowers, not all of them, but most of these flowers were real flowers um, that we use and we partner up with uh, East Olivia for this project. Um, this was, definitely something that I really, really love. They did a great job with the flower work. Um, I put together just like a mood board 
in a mock-up of what I wanted for the window and they did a great job for putting it together. Um, inside the store, I decided that I wanted, you know, just sort of like flower garland and like flowers here and there, like little buckets just to make you feel a little more um, uh, girly and airy and really speak back to the clothes. Um, and the rea I mean, this, this space, I don't, it was so small. We had people outside of the store because we couldn't fit everybody inside. The clothes were just flying off the rack. Uh, people were loving the Instagram uh, moment that we created. So we created an entire wall uh, with flowers that this is what people used to take their photos and post to their social media. Um, again, East Olivia did a great job there. Um, we had such a great response here in, um, in LA with this uh, pop-up that we actually um, did a second pop-up the following weekend, completely unplanned, um, and we did it in New York City. And for the New York City location, we actually had a little flower cart outside the um, DVF store because we had to do it in the location in order because we didn't plant this. Um, but we had some of the econ product that we wanted to sell, so we did the pop up in New York City. Um, this again, the response was great. People were flooding through the store, um, and everything was just flying off the racks. Um, I think making sure that the collection was speaking to the concept was uh, very big, and and it really um, showed to be successful. I think, yeah. And I'll talk about the next pop-up for TVF in just a second. So that was in New York. Again, we literally took over the DVF store in Soho and completely unplanned and, and it was, we made it happen. Um, it was super fun. Again, with uh, the next one I want to talk about is, is again, uh, TVF. And it's just because it was so successful, we decided to um, do a second drop. Um, this was for fall. And for fall, um, I partnered with Talita again and just sort of like trying to get an idea of what her feeling was. It was very focused on flowers again, but I didn't want to go back to just doing flowers like we did for um, the first uh, drop. So for this one, I wanted to go a little more of like Alice in Wonderland, um, just very mystical. Um, and I thought that I wanted to do just giant mushrooms and dry flowers, and it would really was very impactful. Um, people were coming in and taking photos inside uh, on, a mash, on a mushroom that we had done by uh, Argon Props. Um, all of this flower work is actually dry flowers that East Olivia, again, did a great job with. Um, if you look at, at this, we decided to make it feel very like, like an enchanted forest in a way, butterflies, the mushrooms, um, it was very great. The color tones were muted, but very natural. Um, and it was a very, very impactful uh, drop as well. Um, in this photo, you can actually see the giant mushrooms. You could actually sit on the mushrooms to take your photos and they post them to Instagram. So that was very fun for all the customers that were coming by. Um, they really, really love taking the photo on the mushroom. I loved it myself. Um, we actually had such a great success on the first drop of TVF that we decided to extend the drop um, on the second season to London. And in London, we uh, did an incredible job um, at executing the idea that we had. Um, this is where we had the launch event. Um, so we invested the most money in this location. As you can see, like the, the windows look amazing. It's all flowers. Um, we extended that into the store. 
um, the mushrooms are there. So the idea of like this sort of like enchanted forest was everywhere. Uh, inside the store, we had little setups with the mushrooms. The clothes looked great against them. Um, so people were really coming by and just like, it, it, it was a moment of discovery for them and just taking photos in all of these areas. And I think that's what helped to like keep customers in the store and then just really getting them to actually make a purchase. Um, you know, the, not like all the clothes that we had there, you know, not everybody wants to wear a top that is showing their belly or a dress that is super short, but we were able to keep a lot of customers in the store. And one thing that we decided to do is with every purchase, we were giving away um, these dry flower bouquets that we had done as well. Um, and it was just very fun for every single customer to come and shop because it wasn't just coming and looking at what we just dropped. It was, it was all about an experience. Um, and I think the experience that we offer at both locations was pretty exciting. Yeah. Here's another photo. I love this so much. Um, but that's it. Do you guys have any questions? Should I? Before oh. the questions, let me, let me tell everybody that this is a great example of how a Windows Web Profile should be uh, displayed. So congratulations, Cesar. Uh, I would love if everybody that is here can take notes of that. Um, it's amazing. Uh, thank, thank you for you. this. It's, it's very insightful. Thank you. And uh, we would love to open for uh, questions that people have. Um, if anybody want to ask themselves, please feel free. If not, you can chat it and I, I'll be in charge of like passing it to uh, Cesar. Uh, also, we're getting questions from Instagram. Um, so please text, text your questions. Stacy says, I love the use of props, which, yeah. I love it's props. Idea. What's your, what's your thing with props, Cesar? Um, I love props. I think one of the things that, um, was interesting for me when I came to DVF or any of the other brands that I've worked for, I feel like, uh, you need to treat this store like a stage and, and props are exciting. Like having, you know, little crystal, crystal pigeons around is exciting. Having, you know, giant mushrooms where the mannequins can sit on is exciting. And I think people like to see that, like, you know, you don't leave your house, you leave your house to, to, to explore. And if you're going into a store, you want to explore and you want to, you want to see things that are exciting. And I think props are, definitely something that hit the mark with 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 that like um the full window i had the pigeons i had the the newspaper vending machines which you know like i, I was trying to figure out what we were going to do with them afterwards because i was like well like we just literally had newspaper vending machines made specifically for the UEF. Um, but we ended up having a new set partnership. So we had those magazines like putting the little newspaper around the machines and the customers would take them out of us. So I think props are a great tool to attract customers and, you know, have them look at your windows. Yeah. Uh, Richard Glensborn uh, in Instagram says, thank you so much for sharing and inspiring um same patrick bow uh, from instagram say caesar you're so talented um thank you molly newborn uh says it's always been a pleasure to work with caesar whatever i love molly she helped me with all my vinyl work <laughs> she's, she's like i can send her an order and be like i need it tomorrow and she'd be like i hate you but I'll make it happen so ace designs they're amazing yeah, she says, it's the small details uh, that really stand out. He always hits it out of the park. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Twigs and Moss is asking us, is everything created in-house or contracted out? For DVF, I especially for everything the in my team. Um, they say. Okay. What's up? Especially for the pop-ups. Was everything created and then shipped? So for the pop-ups, for example, we uh, came up with a creative concept. 
they did all the drawings um, and then had meetings with uh, East Olivia. East Olivia are great if you want to do anything with flowers. Um, we had meetings with them. Um, they shared back uh, renderings of what they could produce for us. And once we approved them, then they just executed um, at their location. But uh, mostly everything that we did for DVF, um, the concept um, came up from our team. And then we would partner with our vendors to get everything shipped to all the locations. Yes. Perfect. Uh, please, if anybody has another question, now is the time. Uh, and Cesar, I wanted to ask you, uh, like, because you seem to have a very close relationship with the, with the people that helps you to create these uh, things, you know, in these environments, yeah. uh, especially like with AZ Science. Like, what is, what is like your take on that? How do you find new talent as in like specialists or vendors? And do you stick with one person? Do you change around? What do you look for when you look for looking for somebody like this? Um, that's a very good question. I think in uh, that AC Design, I've actually have worked with AC Design outside of DVF. Um, we work together at Gantt. Um, I'm the kind of person that like to that likes to build relationships. I think that's the way that you can. Um, be very successful at your job because if you don't have great partnerships or people that you can trust and you're not able to deliver the kind of work that you want to deliver. Um, and at the end of the day, like building these partnerships is going to, it's going to help you because the people that you work with understand what your, what your expectations are. Um, and once you build those expectations, then you don't really have to keep going back and checking all the time. Is this done correctly? Do you double check the color? Blah, blah, blah. And sometimes, many times, AZ Sign has, you know, I'm like rushing because we needed to like rush uh, something. And I'll send it and they'll be like, um, hey, do you mean to do this? And I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, thank you so much for catching that. No, that's not what we needed to do. So it's great in visual merchandising to build relationships and make sure, making sure that you're working with the same vendors because they'll understand what it is that you're looking for. And many times they'll be able to catch mistakes or like misorders like let's say you forgot to order something for one location they'll be like hey do you mean to mm -hmm. not order for this location in particular and you'll be like oh no sorry we forgot to add them to the order so partnerships with vendors are essential amazing is there any other type of vendors that you love to work with maybe that they do different things you know so i love to work with argon props Argon props, uh, they'll do the crazy stuff for me. So like the, the crystal cover pigeons, they did those for me. Um, the mushrooms, they built those for me. Um, the crowns that we did for the Statue of Liberty, they made those for us. So anything that is a little bit random and just like the fabrication is different, I use them. Um, I use a lot AZ Design for signage and vinyl. Um, they actually did the stairs uh, for us more, like I think every single time. Nice. Um, also, I've used SPS Worldwide. They're really good at just doing multiple locations at once. So they'll be able to produce everything so that you can do a rollout for multiple locations if you're thinking of like 10 locations plus they're mm -hmm. pretty good at that um who else do I, do I use i think that's pretty much everybody oh i use um sono say she is uh it's uh her name is melinda she yes. is great at doing custom orders uh so like if you want cost like cushions she knows how to get them um if you want like you know, printed napkins, she know how to get them. Or if you want, um, like all of those ottomans, the ottomans that I showed in the Ashley Launcher Gallery, those were a different color, but she made covers for us. 
Um, so she's very good at like special orders. Nice. Yeah, it seems like without these people, you know, your job will be a little bit harder than uh, it really yeah, is. Yeah, very hard. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely about relationships. I want to just show one little job yeah. that sure. um, Ace Design did for us because this is actually something that I really, really, really loved. Um, I decided I wanted these acrylic frames for the windows um, going into holiday. And um, they did a great job. We actually ended up um, doing laser engraving into all of the frames uh, so that when the light would hit it, you could see um, just sort of like the design. If you look a little closer to all of these uh, frames, um, they had a design and then some of the frames were actually, they actually had uh, crystals on them. Um, so some of them had like, I don't know, 2,700 crystals all done by hand and so like the red ones had crystals, the teal had crystals, um, and it was pretty good. They did all of the vinyl work and the sort of like mirror reflecting floors and plants, um, which it was, they basically executed the idea that I had and I really, really enjoyed it um, because it was very well done. You can really see it in this one, like the floor and the plants basically sort of like married into each other and you couldn't really tell if they were just floating in the air or what was happening there. They're very, very good. They also did the costume white frames in the back. I see. Yeah. Okay, we have one more comment from Jolene. I go to the DBF flagship in meatpacking a few times a year for Diane's event, mm -hmm. Idle Voices and International Women's Day. It's my yeah. favorite retail space downtown. So beautifully branded with great Instagramable moments. And it always feels very strong and feminist like they are. Yeah, yeah. International Women's Day is the biggest day for us. Um, I, I did it twice and it definitely made me work a lot <laughs> um, because we the VM department takes charge on a lot of how the space looks, how the stores looks, how, um, how to create the interactive moments, the photo booth. So yes, we, we definitely put a lot of work and effort into this. Amazing. If anybody doesn't have another question, I think this is it. Uh, Thank you uh, a lot for this presentation. It was amazing to see your input. Oh, yeah, we have one more question. Yeah. Uh, how far ahead are the windows planned? I like to plan um, very far ahead. Uh, I'm the kind of person that I start thinking when we do market, it's when I think about what the windows are gonna look like. So this particular window was done, um, sometime in this I believe it was the summer um, yeah it was summer when we were presenting the, the winter collection and that's when I came up with the idea the collection was created with um, sort of like an art studio in mind and I thought this would be really great executed this is actually the same concept that we did to present the collection during market and then we extended it for, for the windows in the stores. So I'm the kind of person that I like to plan um, the windows with the same concept that we use for market. Um, not okay. everybody does that, okay. but that's the way I like to do it because it saves me a lot of time. I see. Perfect, one more question. Anyone, yeah. please chat it now or forever hold your peace. Um, thank you for your work, Cesar, says Jolene Mojica. Thank you. Luis Campbell, thank you, Cesar. This is very insightful and inspiring. Your work is beautiful. Thank you. And yeah, uh, I think this is it, guys. Thank you so much, Cesar. This was amazing. Thank you so much. Congratulations on having an amazing example of how Windows Word Profiles should look like. 
uh, and thank you so much for your time. And we'll, uh, we're, we are excited to see what, what are you going to do uh, next. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be uh, in the loop for it. Thank, thank you so you much, so everybody. Much. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And this video will be uh, saved in the same, uh, in the event link that is on Windows World and in the events tab. Um, this will be saved there in the next few hours. Uh, if anybody wants to rewatch it or share it or whatever. Uh, thank you so much and see you guys uh, uh, next uh, Tuesday. Okay? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.